that because now blast from the past we shine the spotlight again on fighters from years Rocky past. Marciano, top ranking Joe Lewis is the leading contender. And up that on the the greatest. Joe Frazier with a left hook. Good right hand thrown by Foreman that time. Look at that left that hook. That belt that goes to Ray Van It's blast from the past on Talking Boxing. And this week's blast from the past is being sponsored by KO Fantasy Boxing. Check it out, www.kofantasyboxing.com. Uh, and this week, it features uh, former world champion and boxing hall of famer, Rocky Kansas. And joining us right now to tell us all about The Rock, well, The Rock from Kansas that wasn't really from Kansas, is my man, Alex Papali. What's up, brother? Hello, baby. How are you? Oh, not too bad. Uh, wondering what month it is. It feels like winter up here in upstate New York. It's, yeah, uh, I'm I had to put a sweatshirt on. I know. It's crazy. Oh, God. But anyway, Rocky Canvas. Kansas, I mean. <laughs> canvas. Rocky fell in the canvas. Rocky you know, I, Canvas. I, I, I couldn't. Rarely I, hit the canvas. Yeah, he rarely did hit the canvas. But uh, Rocky Kansas, tell us all about this uh, little monster. Yeah, so Mr. Rocky Kansas. Uh, his real name was actually Rocco Tozo, Tozo, Tozo. Uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but he was Italian. Um, he was born April 21st, 1895 in Buffalo, New York. Uh, one of the nicknames I saw for him was a Little Hercules. That's the one Box Rec uses. Um, I also saw them referring to him quite a bit as the Bison City Italian because he was from uh, upstate New York. Uh, this was another uh, tough newsboy, Billy C. <laughs> I know. When, when, <laughs> when, when, when I saw that on his, on his record, like on his uh, history, I was like, oh, Alex is going to love this. These, these newspaper boys with some bad asses, huh? That's right. <laughs> Don't mess with a newspaper boy. Uh, and he also had two brothers who boxed. He started boxing as a pro at 16 years old. Um, up in Buffalo, I think the guy's name was Charles Murray, who was involved with um, uh, promoting and was actually somehow involved with promoting the uh, Joe Gans Frank Earn fight. Um, and he thought that uh, you know um, Rocky had a future as a fighter, and he did. He started fighting, and you know if you look at his record, he has a tremendous amount of fights uh, there in Buffalo. Which um, I, you never, I never knew was such a boxing hotbed. But I guess at one point he had a fight. I think it was when he fought, when he wins the title eventually, which was something he just set his mind to, and it took him like 20 years of boxing before he got there. Um, but uh, it was the first title fight in Buffalo for 23 years. So I guess Buffalo must have a pretty significant uh, fight history. Um, I know it is way up there in the north, um, or very close to can Canada, because um, uh, I remember driving up there uh, to meet you one time, and it seemed like it was quite a drive. <laughs> well, it's west. It's west, New York. And and they put a... Bu actually, um, uh, Bob... Uh, oh, geez, I forget his last name. He put out a book on all the Buffalo... I I'll, get, I'll, I'll send you the info. Oh, really? Yeah, because there, there's just so many fights. They must have tons of shows. There, there was, he put a whole book out on just Buffalo fighters from, like, you know, 1900 up to the present. And uh, I was shocked that there was so many, and so many fighters that that you've heard of that originated in Buffalo that they kind of shovel out under the carpet, carpet once they get the hell out of the Buffalo and they realize that there's actually places that don't have 20 feet of snow and stuff, you know, and uh, I don't know if they go back to Buffalo, but uh, shuffle off to Buffalo. I think they were shuffling off from Buffalo, you know, but uh, uh, Rocky, Kansas, uh, interesting how he took on the name. You know, you, normally you hear these stories how they... They take it on from somebody else and, you know, as an honor and everything else. Well, I, apparently uh, when he made his pro debut, the ring announcer uh, introduced him as Rocky Kansas by mistake. And he decided that's what he was going to fight under. That's kind of strange, huh? That is, yeah, that is crazy. But, you know, it is it is a cool um, sort of thing in the sense that, you know, he was, uh, from the very first time he started fighting, he was always that uh, and it was just an accident. Yeah. Think about it. It's almost like, um, you know, maybe he was superstitious. It wouldn't be uncommon to encounter 
a superstitious Italian. No, no, not as bad as Manny Pacquiao's mom, but uh, <laughs> no, that's but, true. but pretty, but pretty, but pretty bad, pretty bad. You know, it, just as long as you like garlic, you're okay. But check this out. Here's the stat. You mentioned that he had a couple of brothers. How about that? Him uh, and his two brothers uh, collectively defeated uh, 189 fighters in the Buffalo, New York area alone between 1909 and 1937. That's pretty amazing. That backs up what you're saying about how many fights were up in Buffalo. Definitely, and I, and I, it does make you wonder um, because they describe his style, um, Rocky's style, very much as as you know, a sort of he's a he's five foot two, a lightweight, but he's you know sort of a stocky. Um, uh, charging bull of a um, brawler type of a lightweight, not, uh, you know, he as a heavyweight, we love these kind of guys. You know, he'd be a Marciano or a, um, a Joe Frazier type. Um, but you do wonder, uh, he mu- with, with all those different fighters in Buffalo, you must see a lot of different styles. So even though he um, was sort of crude, um, it was, he had quite a few wins. He was incredibly tough. And it was really the incredible stylus that gave him problems. The really, really good um, boxers, and like you had mentioned earlier in the show, um, and I think was at close to the top of that guy's list of welterweights, um, was uh, the great Benny Leonard. Yeah, he he didn't uh, he fought him several times, <coughs> didn't fare too well. But he fought, uh, you know, Ad Wolgeist, uh, Johnny Kilbane. Uh, Patsy Klein, I thought she got into music, but he beat her ass too, I guess, back in 1918. <laughs> he beat Johnny Dundee, and that was another boxer that he did beat, but I think bu- Dundee was getting old at that time. Yeah, but he fought Dundee a bunch of times. Yeah, he fought, fought him twice. Yeah, yeah and, and uh, how about we did, uh, I think we did a blast on George K.O. Cheney once, or at least his name came up. He he got a win over him, and uh, he fought Lou Tender, Tendler, who was a, uh, uh, who was a uh, Hall of Famer. Um, and, and here's a name that, that, that I noticed on his resume that nobody really talks about. He won a 10-round decision in 1921 against Johnny Ray. Johnny Ray would go on to become Billy Kahn's trainer. Remember with all of the famous stuff about Johnny Ray and, and talking him into being a pro, you got to get paid for Well, that was one of his last fights in the early 20s, which I thought was, uh, was pretty cool. That's when, you know, you remember how I always say boxing was a, was a trade back then, you know, you, you, you started out in the amateurs and, and you fought your way, you, you learned, you became a trainer, I mean, uh, you know, it, it, boxing people stayed in the sport, that's so different than what it is today. Yeah, it's true, it does seem like it's, um, it's something they uh, intended to learn and it was a craft, you know, yeah. Um, yeah. they stuck with it. Yeah, well, they looked at losses as, as learning uh, um, you know opportunities, and and you know as good as he was, and we'll get to his records and stuff later. But as as good as he was, um, after uh, uh, over fifteen years of boxing as a professional, um, and uh, in his, uh, uh, I, I believe uh, uh, his hundredth and something fight. I mean, it was uh, one hundred and sixty in his hundred and six. He only fought one hundred and sixty six in his whole career. So uh, six fights before he retired is when he got to fight uh, for that world title in in Buffalo. N- over twelve thousand people were there, Alex, in in nineteen twenty five. That that's a huge crowd. Yeah, it definitely was, and um, and it was a, a very it was like a record breaking um, Buffalo event in, t- in terms of um, you know the uh, the the live gate, but um, you know of course it's not going to be. Um, it, and it was a big one for the year in terms of boxing, but it's not going to be as big as some of the other ones, you know, in larger venues and stuff. But he he did fight in those bigger venues as well. Um, and, and you're right, he it's when you look at this, he became a nemesis of Benny Leonard, um, and they did fight four times. The first one, it looks like um, that was just a newspaper decision, and that was only a ten rounder. Um, and it almost gets lost because in some places I saw it referred that they only fought three times. But if you look at his record, I do see it. And I and may, I wonder if that in, um, had something that, um, you know, had like an influence on it being a trade for people. Uh, the idea of a newspaper decision. Um, because if you think about it, if you're the fighter 
and you know there's no decision going to be rendered, no official decision, that affects mainly, I guess, the gambling on it. But if you're the fighter, you're probably still going to fight with the same amount of effort because you're getting paid the same, and the better you look, the more likely you're going to get future fights. So I wonder if that had something to do with, and then, you know, the newspapers are just going to say what they're going to say, and some will say you won, and some will say you won't. And, you know, I wonder if that had an influence on the way guys thought about how losses didn't mean as much. Because with a newspaper decision, you could literally win and lose the same fight depending on the, the paper that covered it. Yeah, there's no question about that. Title fights weren't uh, fought in... Uh, newspaper decisions typically were fought in a, in a state during this era that was not allowed to render a decision unless there was a knockout. So yeah, if, Jersey was one of them. I think that first Leonard fight, because here's the thing, uh, here's an article in May of 1921 where they were trying, and this was something I thought was in- interesting, too. This was in the New York Times. Uh, from May 14th to 21, they're putting, trying to put together the fight with Benny, Benny Leonard and Rocky Kansas. And again, just like we talk about a lot of times, think about the stylistically, that's a match people wanted to see, because Benny Leonard, the really slick boxer, um, the matador type of guy, and Rocky Kansas, the bull, um, charging, uh, pressuring, coming in on the boxer, that's the, what makes a good fight. So they, they wanted to put that fight together, and here they're, they're questioning whether Leonard will make the recognized lightweight limit of 135 pow- pounds is problematical. Uh, this is the only detail in connection with the match not definitely agreed upon. Indications are that the title holder will elect to enter the ring at catch weights. So even here it is in 1921, they're thinking about doing that. And because the fight was going to be in New Jersey, the, um, the match will, um, there was the question of whether or not it was going to be the decision rendered. Yeah, well, some of those states also <coughs> would only allow 10-round fights for title fights. That's why you see those sometimes. And uh, unless it was a knockout, there was no decision. It was a newspaper decision. It's kind of crazy the way the, the laws were. But that, the Benny Leonard fight ended up taking place in 21, was June 6th. And uh, that was in Harrison. Was, was that Harrison, uh, Pennsylvania, though, right? That, which one? The, in, tw- in 1921. Actually, the, um, that is the second one. Uh, that's their second fight. And in that one, that one, it's interesting where they, that one's interesting the way they talk about it because um, it reminded me of something recently at yeah, June 7th, 21. That was their... Uh, second fight, because if you look earlier, there was a 10-rounder that was a no decision on his record. Um, but that one, they described it as it lacked spectacular features. And they said about Leonard, who usually looks great, he boxed on the defensive practically the entire fight. Even when he stung um, Rocky Kansas, he wouldn't follow up like he, he, they knew he could. He boxed rings around his rival and had him missing often. Did it sound a little like uh, something we saw recently? Um, you know, so sometimes when they matched up, it was a bit of a dud. But then those next two fights were better. And Bill, in that last one, it was one of the first, it was the first time he was stopped, that Kansas actually stopped. Uh, forget about Pacquiao with his uh, sore shoulder. Rock, Rocky Kansas fought four rounds with a broken arm. Yeah, and you know people they they can't continue when they when they hurt their hands and these guys you know they he fought with a broken arm. Uh, um, what's his name? Charlie Burley used to put broken hands into the gloves before <laughs> before the fight. You know how painful is that? I, you know you could look at it two ways. You could say it was stupid back then, but they had no choice. But uh, uh, yeah, Benny Leonard uh, he they 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 had some uh, good fights between each other there's no question and, and i'm glad you mentioned johnny dundee because uh he beat johnny dundee and that was towards the end of his career like i had mentioned his title was really and that wasn't even the best rocky canvas by the time he won the title uh he uh only made uh, he only fought a couple of more times after that he lost his title in 1926 so he, he, he had it for about a year less than a year to sammy mandel another uh a great fighter 
And then interesting um, what happened with Rocky Canvas, which typically isn't what we talk about. He retired after he lost a 10-round decision in Chicago and his belt to Sammy Mandel in July of 1926, and he retired only to come back six years later and fight Joe Trippi uh, and lost a six-round decision in Buffalo and then retired for good. That seems to be out of the norm for this era. Yeah, yeah, and I think it probably was financial because he had in the money he made, he invested it well, but he invested it all in stocks and like mutual funds and all stuff that crashed in 1929. So it could have been that that comeback was a hope that maybe if he felt good, he could try to make a little money in the ring again. But, um, it, it, you know, he did not continue. He ended up winning. I'm not sure what this was, Bill. Um, they said that he made $25 a week for four years working as a wagon checker. I'm not sure what a wagon checker is. But I, then after that, he started working for the city of, city of Buffalo doing construction. Well, he also, I, in my notes, it was he was a cab driver. Yeah, he, I thought I saw something about that, say, that that said a cab driver. I wonder if if that's a wagon checker is uh, like maybe he was driving like a some sort of professional driving like it was um something that has wagons i, I don't know well you know he uh, he like trailer type cars he d uh, oh like a like a tractor trailer type thing well not like a not a full truck but something that has uh i don't know that would have a wagon like a rickshaw <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> Just Buffalo, the big rickshaw. Um, <laughs> he, he, he was he had a he had a shovel because he was getting he was shoveling snow in July, you know. That's but uh, right. but uh, but anyway, Rocky Canvas, uh, Rocky Canvas. I said it again, Rocky Kansas. Um, he um, he passed away fairly young at fifty eight years old. Uh, he battled with cancer. What was the story with that? I I, I don't know anything extensive. Was it a long battle or was it quick? Or what? I don't know. From what um, his obituary says, it says, he, sadly, yeah, he was only 58. That's way too young. Um, he had been in the hospital, Roswell Park Memorial Institute, for three and a half months. He had gone in there for abdominal surgery. So I'm not sure if um, it was a cancer that was in his abdomen. Uh, the surgery must not have done wonders because he never got out. You know this era of boxing, the, the early 1900s through the, the the you know early 30s, must have been so exciting to be a boxing fan. I mean, these guys fighting each other as much. I mean, could you imagine reading the newspaper, Benny Leonard, you know, guys like Rocky Kansas and and Johnny Ray fighting, and you know all these names, Johnny Dunn. D and et cetera, et cetera. You know, could you imagine, I mean, what it was like? You know, they just, they probably just didn't realize what it would be like 100 years later, you know? It's true. And, and you know, I think we're sort of, I, I find myself doing that now with, because um, especially the heavyweights, uh, I, I always think in the 80s that we had like a, such a lousy crop of heavyweights. But now they are badasses compared to what we have today. So people were probably doing that even in the 20s, thinking, yeah, these guys are pretty tough. But the guys we had 10, 20 years ago, they were even tougher. You know, so it is, it's an amazing sport to have a sport that has so many levels of history. Well, you know, the, the, the thing is, is that, and I believe this, if, if, if the money wasn't so huge for, like, NFL and, and basketball and baseball players, you know, you're probably looking at some of these giant kids that are being drafted uh, into these other sports that could have been the greatest fighters that we could have imagined. Could you imagine the Jets just drafted a guy that that's six foot five, three hundred pounds, and he he runs like the wind. You know, I mean, like you just can't stop the guy. You know, and and could you imagine? And he's chiseled. You know, could you imagine a guy that big? That's fighting in the heavyweight division. A guy that that started boxing at nine years old, and he he grew into a three hundred pound, six foot six, killing machine. You know that would be scary. I know, I know, <laughs> I know. When well, you got a guy that makes like Klitschko look like a midget, you know. I mean, you know, come on, man. I would love it. I just wish that somebody would. You know, I was talking to a young parent uh, recently, and they're like, uh, the son, I guess, is maybe 
10 or 8, something like that. And I'm like, oh, is he playing football? And, oh, no, no, they're not football. We're only letting him play soccer. You know, we don't want him to play anything rough, you know. And I'm like, wait, first of all, have you checked the head injuries on soccer? They're, you know, it's pretty high, you know. They don't have any equipment in case you haven't noticed, you know. But anyway, who did you put Rocky Kansas in with? So I put him in, um, even though his next fight, and even his last fight was um, technically uh, junior uh, welter, I still thought that um, because he was one of the uh, greater lightweights of note that we've thought about lately, I put him in against Terrence Crawford, and then I also put him in against Mickey Bay. Uh, So first, uh, Crawford, Kansas um, lost. He was actually stopped by Terrence Crawford, uh, which I thought was a little odd, you know, considering, well, but Crawford does have some real skill, boxing skill, so... I'm not sure, you know, I don't know about that, because even if you look at Kansas was only, um, he was knocked out only once, and that was by um, the uh, the Chilean guy, I, I forgot his name now, um, Lu- and it was a, a sort Luis, of one-punch Lu- knockout, Vince- uh, Vin- 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 Vincentini. Yeah, Luis Vincentini. Yeah, he caught him uh, with one shot, and then he avenged it. So I kind of thought of it more, that was sort of fluky in a way. Uh, Benny Leonard was the guy who stopped him, uh, the other guy who stopped him, and he, you know, walked him down, took him apart, outboxed him, slicked him. I think Crawford probably could do that. The computer thought so, too. Kansas did drop him in the seventh, and then Crawford had him down twice in the eighth and stopped him at 204 at the eighth. But when they fight a hundred times, Terrence Crawford, um, I mean, uh, Rocky Kansas gets the better of him. Uh, out of 100 fights, 65 wins for um, uh, Rocky Kansas, 30 losses, 5 draws, and Kansas stopped Crawford 36 times. And of Crawford's wins, he did get 20 knockouts. You know, that is, that is strange considering Rocky Kansas fought 166 fights and was stopped three times. You know, that's it. Three times. You know, once was a knockout. The other two were TKOs. So uh, I, I do. Uh, I see what you're saying. But um, you know, Terence Crawford. And, and I think he was only down like maybe four times, three times in his whole in career. Hundred, I, 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 that's crazy. I know, and they got they got, and nothing wrong with TC. I love I love Crawford, but you know, they have him knocking him out in the first fight. Come on. Who? Well, okay. Well, how, how did he do against Bay? Okay, so against Mickey Bay, the first time I had them fight. Um, Rocky Kansas uh, beat him by unanimous decision, uh, three scores, uh, w- two scores of 115 to 112, one score of 116 to 112, all for Kansas. And then when they fought 100 times, Kansas got the better of him, uh, 85 wins for Rocky Kansas, 10 losses, five draws. He stopped Mickey Bay 60 times. And... Um, uh, of Mickey Bay's uh, ten victories, he got three KOs. Cool. Did you put him in with anyone else? No, just those two guys. Just those two. Those, uh, you know, because um, Crawford was the best at lightweight, and right now Mickey Bay is the best at lightweight, uh, according to the Billy C rankings. He's above. Uh, we have him above Crawford. Well, Crawford's now up at junior. Oh, that's um, right. He left. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. That's right. I. I I forgot. I forgot, man. I, I've been, uh, I've been. Uh, yeah, I, for, I had to check because I forgot about that Beltron fight was at one thirty nine. I forgot about that because I was like, wasn't that at one thirty five? But no, it wasn't. They were both over one thirty five. Yeah, I, the lightweight division. Uh, Sharif Bogary is uh, should be uh, uh, getting back in the mix. I would think, right? Yeah, and so, um, I think the next guy down was. Um, Miguel Vasquez and wasn't um, Mickey Bay is where he is because he will beat Miguel Vasquez, I think. So. Yeah. Well, and then you got yeah. Well, that the uh, Gamboa is still in there. You know, we haven't haven't seen him since he got knocked out. But anyway, let's wrap up Rocky Canvas. Uh, Canvas. I said it a third time. <laughs> I'm out. Rocky Kansas. Rocky Kansas uh, uh, had a uh, career record. 
62 wins, 38 coming by knockout, 11 losses in which he was stopped three times, and nine draws. Now, like Alex mentioned, he did fight in the newspaper era, so he got another 62 wins in the newspaper decisions, 15 losses, and nine draws. Total of 166 fights throughout his career, 1,376 rounds uh, as a pro with a 23% knockout ratio. Uh, he was only five foot. Um, uh, what was he? Five foot five and a half. Five five foot two. Five foot two and a half. Okay. Yeah, he's little. Yeah, five foot two, uh, sixty three inch reach. Um, he, uh, like I said, he uh, passed away at fifty eight years old. Former world lightweight champion and an international boxing hall of famer in uh, the year two thousand ten, Rocky Kansas. Our uh, blast from the past this time, and uh, Alex, great job as usual. Uh, listen, we're going to take a short break. Don't go anywhere, Alex. I want to get your thoughts on uh, uh, some of the news that's happening today. So we'll take a short break, and then uh, uh, I will be back, uh, you know, I-, I would say in about two minutes. We'll be right back. Talking boxing with Billy C. Every week, two hours of the best boxing talk on the radio. I have a bunch of questions, Donnell, right? If you feel like you want to, you can answer for J.D. first. Why will you win? J.D. Chapman, why will you win? Baby Holmes will get sick and... <laughs> get hit by a train that day on the way to the title. He might have diarrhea, he might have the flu, he might throw up. One of his eyeballs might fall out that day, and I might get lucky. Talking Boxing with Billy C. If you want your voice heard on Talking Boxing with Billy C., then call our hotline at 845-228-8710. Leave a voicemail. Or you could just tell Billy C. that you like his mustache. Should I ask you your opinion about this well, idea? I'm just trying to give you no, the encouragement. I, listen, all I need from you is to make sure you don't hang up on people. Right. And if Sorry. we like your call, we'll play it back on the so air. You have the knowledge and wisdom of boxing because of what you do and how well Leave you do Leave your name, it. hometown, and what you think of the show. 845-228-8710. We want to hear you. Hey, fight fans. Check out KOFantasyBoxing.com. KO Fantasy Boxing is boxing's only trademarked fantasy game. Check it out, www.kofantasyboxing.com. Select your own gym, your own fighters. Track them through a season that can last from three months to a year, depending upon which league you join. You got to check this out, man. www.kofantasyboxing.com. Join it today. Again, www.kofantasyboxing.com. And tell them Billy C sent you. The one, the 